Hello and thank you for joining us once again here at SGTV. Again, we are joined by our very special guest, David Savory. Uh, so today, Dave, we're going to be talking about the 18th edition regs. What you think of them and how it may have affected you positively or negatively? Obviously, the, the big things with the 18th edition were really AFDDs, surge protection and premature failure of cable support. I, th I think they're probably the, the big three. AFDDs are still out there somewhere. I don't know of anybody buying them. Uh, or fitting them, they, they may be, but still a technology that's yet to be sold to the installers, especially in its current form factor. Once they've got it, if they ever get it sort of packaged into a, uh, say, a single module, something that can easily retrofit and provide both your overcurrent and your earth fault protection as well as um, your arc fault protection, then maybe people will start buying it in numbers, especially if the, they can bring the price down. It's a, that's a lot of ifs. Yeah. <laughs> we want it cheaper and smaller. And more readily available yeah. and frankly until uh, amendment one or whatever comes along and says thou shall fit these people probably won't um, but there's still a lot of confusion about how well they work Paul Meenan on Group E5 has done some good demonstrations of, of, of them in action after he's uh, been over to Vienna and spoken to, uh, to the good folk at Eaton SPDs of course there's something that I probably didn't put a lot of consideration into before 18th edition but obviously now I do uh, I would recommend them uh, most of my work's domestic so uh, there is a clause in the regulation saying that you don't have to fit them for domestic clients if you assess that this that the installation uh, isn't necessarily going to benefit from such to, to cut a long regulation short Personally, I'd say that with the amount of electronic gadgets we've got these days and for the fact that they can be bought relatively cheaply, it's better to have than not. Yeah. Um, personally, I've, I've never, I don't think, seen a site that's been damaged by a surge event or equipment that's been damaged in a property by a surge event. But where I live, we don't get a lot of lightning strikes elsewhere in the country. Um, it may be more prevalent and people may have seen it more. It's just, just my experience of it. I've put one in on my own house. I would recommend other people to have them as well. But that's obviously a, uh, a big thing for the 18th. And then, of course, we've got the, the pain of premature collapse of cables with all cables everywhere now needing to be secured, even if they're in trunking or conduit or what have you. And that, that's become a bit of a headache um, because obviously that, that does change a lot of jobs that we're on uh, and it's, it's the industry I think has been a bit slow to to bring stuff in I know that when 118th edition came out and said all this back in July last year sort of it, summer and autumn last year I was going on the whole wholesale saying well what have you got that will allow me to comply with this and there wasn't a lot out there there's yeah. more now I mean obviously with the, they've, they've all got the sort of the peer we have 200 whatever fire clips and that was about the only thing they could offer you. There is more available now, various sort of clips and devices, things you can put in the trunking, little wild things you can put in the trunking to, to hold your cables in the trunking, or the, the metallic clips you can now put in place of saddles around conduit. Clip round cables that can go straight into the wall. A lot of it's horrendously priced. <laughs> which I suppose that's going to have an effect on you and your business. It is. I mean, it's not that you have to use these exclusively. If you're putting up a length of, say, twin earth along a wall, you can use your traditional plastic clips, but every now and again you have to have one of these fire clips. So you, you don't have to clip the whole thing out using these expensive things. But where, when we're talking about sort of over 40 quid with that for a bag of 100 clips, you do look at that and think, oh, that's a bit of a sting, isn't it? I mean, it's just, just, it's just little bits of twisted metal, for goodness sake. Someone's having a laugh here. Uh, and I think, you know, that, that, that puts a lot of people off. And the problem, again, that I've got as a legitimate installer, if someone who's trying to work legitimately, is that I'm constantly having to um, work to these sort of standards where there are people who are prepared to undercut me because they they don't care about the standards or they're ignorant of the standards or they're just doing it as a cash in hand job and they're not going to worry about this sort of stuff. They're just going to put up a piece of self-adhesive trunking without any regard for whether it will ever fall down again. It'll look great for six weeks until the adhesive dries out and it drops off. Uh, or they're going to just use standard plastic P-clips and not worry too much about, about anything else. So it's, it's difficult as an installer because you, you've got to get your head around this whole array of 
new clip technology yeah. <laughs> in order to, um, to, to try and comply. Uh, and it's, um, it, that's been the most pain, I would say. That's in the, uh, the changes to certificates, because again, uh, whenever there's a amendment or a new edition comes out, they always beef up the, the paperwork. And if I compare the certificates to how they were when I first started, how they are now, an EIC is, is several pages longer uh, with the new and improved sort of checklist you've got to go through. And the, the big change for the 18th edition was of course the minor work certificate because previously that would have asked you for, uh, if you were putting in a socket spur for example, it, it never asked you for details of the um, ring continuity or the external impedance which meant that a lot of installers just wouldn't have bothered checking those things. And, you know, it's right that you should be checking those things, but now they're specifically there on the form. And whereas you might have gone into a small job before and thought, okay, well, I'm just going to take a, a an impedance, the, the thing I've modified. Now you have to take the board apart and you have to get the earth out and you have to check that it's uh, okay, which is obviously it's the right thing to do because you're, you're verifying that the installation and yeah. the source is safe. But some installations, getting to the board and getting into the board and cutting the power off and disconnecting the earth is all a an access and disassembly job that for some really basic moves and changes you, you could do without. <laughs> yeah. and, it, and it adds to the complexity of the job. And there are a lot of very simple jobs that we get called to, something like a, a simple ceiling light fitting change where uh, obviously Nigel works with me on the van. He's, he's up the ladder doing the job and I'm on the laptop doing the paperwork and it takes about the same amount of time to do both. So, you know, it's, it's the paperwork can take as long as the job yeah. these days. And of course, it's only the legitimate the installers who are having to do it. So every time they beef up the paperwork, those who aren't working to the regs and doing the paperwork, I don't care anyway. Yeah. So, you know, it's extra hassle. I mean, how, how far down a rabbit hole, so to speak, do you find you have to to go when it's a, when it comes to, um, say, if you're putting in some new cables somewhere and you're having to use, uh, you know, like the metal cable clips and you, you're finding someone else's work that isn't um, up to these new regs, do you find you've then got to chase all this work out, do all that, or? No, it's not my job to make good somebody else's mistakes. I mean, if I if it were, then I'd never get anything else done. I'd be going to all sorts of sites and going, oh, blimey, look at this. And all I can do, if I've, if I've come across work that someone else has put in, unless it's immediately dangerous and something has to be done to stop someone from, you know, dying or whatever, uh, all I can do is make the homeowner aware of, you know, what that guy's done is, is, is problematic and you, you ought to get him back to sort, him, sort it out. Um, so it's, it's not for me to make good somebody else's cock-ups unless the homeowner explicitly tasks me to do so unless they say, well, can you fix it? We'll pay you to fix it. Because obviously, you know, otherwise I'd be working, otherwise I'd either be doing it for free, which would be ridiculous because it's not my mistake to make good, um, or any simple job I go to could potentially could ballpark into some, something much bigger, which yeah. would impact on my schedule. Because obviously I've, I've booked out an hour to go and fix this light fitting and then I found the, all these other problems and I've got another job to go to that day. I, I can't sort of stay there and, and do that. So uh, yeah, it, it, it's um, you do come across these things and, and all you can do is, is make the homeowner aware of the risk. How they handle the risk is entirely up to them. But once I've passed that risk on to them, then it, it becomes their responsibility. Yeah. How have you found uh, the earth rods? Because um, that's um, been a, a new talking point within the race. It was a talking point. It never came in. They were on about, um, I, I can't quite remember exactly what they were on about. I don't think I ever did find out quite what they were on about. There was talk about uh, earth rods being required for all installations. And then there, it's one of those things that sort of snowballed into all sorts of rumour. And I never did get to the bottom of it. I must admit, I didn't look into it too hard. but. Uh, there was rumour that you turn up for a minor works and you've got to put an earth rod in, which I doubt that would be the case because that would just be unworkable. Um, but again, if they're talking about you, you changing the earthing arrangements for a pr property from uh, PME or TNS into, into something, into a TT installation, then it's just not workable in a lot of cases, especially in urban environments. It's all right if you're out in the sticks and you've, you've got some earth around the house that you can stick one of these things down into, safe in the knowledge that you're not going to hit a water main or a gas pipe or more cabling or comms cabling or anything 
Um, but in a lot of urban environments, you just that's just just not a workable choice. Uh, and I I don't know quite what what the proposal was for that or how serious it was or whether it will come in. What I can say is if they did come along and say, right, well, you've got to start sticking earth rods in there everywhere, most people would probably just go to hell with that. <laughs> Not yeah. I know I would. I, there, would there would just be a, a point where, a tipping point where you go, I can't work to this anymore. I, I, I can't, yeah, I can't. <clears throat> or I want to work to the regulations. I want to be compliant, but you've made it so that I just cannot do it anymore because they're, unless you start regulating the industry to make sure that everyone is doing it, then I'm just going to go to people and go, I can't do this because you, you need a certified sword. And all they're going to do is go to the next guy who's going to go, yeah, I'll do it for you. Yeah, not caring about the race. <laughs> yeah, no, no paperwork, cash in hand, no questions asked. Yeah. And that'll be my business finished. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we were going to talk just quickly about some of the products uh, that we're doing at Unicrimp because of the, the new regs that obviously, you know, trying to keep up. And we've got uh, just a selection of some of the, the new fire clips we've got. We've got the, uh, the Metal P clips, saddle clips, we've got stainless steel ties, stainless steel tie mounts, all things, you know, the, the products that are going to keep you in line with the regs. And we've got a link in the description to get you to Unicrimp's website, so um, have a look on there if there's anything you need, um, you can always contact us. And that's all we've got, oh, that's, <laughs> that's all we've got time for for today. So if you'd like to see more from myself or Dave, please do like and subscribe here at SGTV, and uh, we hope to see you again soon. Thank you.